Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I'm going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, phone level security. No, 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 seriously, bear with me. Phone level security is super important. It's one of those features that's always part of the kind of the mature database solution. If you're in SQL Server, in Oracle, if you're in some kind of proper relational database, proper, then it can do that kind of pattern. And certainly lots of semantic models, certainly things like Power BI, Tableau, all that kind of thing, have the ability to do row level security. You get that kind of thing. I want a gigantic fact table, and I want different users coming in to be able to see the slice, the segment of that table that pertains to their own security privileges. And in Databricks, that was never a thing. In Spark, that was never a thing. Um, and actually, I've just recorded a talk for a conference, and I was like, that's one of the reasons that it's not a full lake house yet. And that's, that's it's no longer true, because we can do row level security in Databricks, which is a massive, massive achievement. That is a huge, huge tick in that box of saying you can treat a lake with the same rigor, with the same security, with the same discipline as you treat a full scale database. I'm going to show you how. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments if you think this pattern is useful and if you're going to implement it soon. Otherwise, let's have a look. Okay, so it was part of the Databricks Runtime 7.3 release and I missed it. Um, so we can have a look at what that is. Essentially, really, really small little thing saying we've got some dynamic view functions and we can say current user to return the username. So who is currently logged in and is member to say, is this user currently part of a Databricks group? Now, that is going to be the slightly bad side. Uh, it means either we need to keep a giant list in somewhere in our data of all of the user IDs, or we need to bake things like groups, but Databricks groups are not Active Directory groups. So we need to create and maintain these groups inside the Databricks workspace, but we can now do it programmatically. Not the end of the world. Okay, so a few things. If you're in pure 7.3, you need to enable it. Uh, 7.4 and up, then it's just enabled. And we get this thing. So we can say, I want to, oops, zoomed in too much. So I can say, is member, and then pass it the name of a Databricks group. And that'll return true or false, depending on whether or not the person who's currently running this is a member of that group. And then current user just returns the straight string. I see group as more useful, honestly. Um, so they've got a few different examples of these in here. So column level, level permissions, they've got a case statement in a particular view. Um, and it's basically saying, unless the person is a member of this group, then blank out this column, but put in redacted, put in something. And there's an example a little bit later talking about using that to do dynamic data masking. It's all a little bit manual having to write a view to do this kind of thing, but still a useful bit of functionality. For me, the far more useful is this one of saying, I want to dynamically filter my data set. So I want to create a view and I can just give people access to that view, not the underlying table. And when they access it, if they are a member of a certain group, then apply some kind of filter. Now, I was a little bit worried walking through this because they're all fairly hard coded how it's going. So we'll have a go, we'll see what we can do, we'll see what we can get working in terms of building that out as a group. And then there is another example in here of using regex to then mask it, replace certain characters, give you lots of asterisks and keep the domain, that kind of thing, super useful. Okay, so that's, that's the new thing. So essentially, we're talking about this one thing of is member. That's it, that's all we're gonna talk about, but the features that can enable and how well it works. So let's dip over. I've got this real simple uh, thing. I've basically just hard coded a load of data into a data frame. So I'm saying, create me a load of stuff. Uh, most importantly, I've got this country field. So I'm saying, I've got a load of employees. I've got their salary data. So not everyone should be able to see my salary data. Um, and I've got the country that that employee uh, belongs to. I've then created that as this employees table. So if I go and look at employees, I'll see it's a Delta table. I'll see all that kind of stuff. So I can just go, as we've done here, select star for my employees and it'll just give me my list of people. So currently I can see everyone in that list. Okay, so what we need to do is take that query and say, well, let's apply some kind of security. Makes sense. Okay, so we wanna do it based on country. So we wanna be able to say, am I a member of that relevant country or not? So over in our admin console, which you can get to by going under there, you've got your admin console, you obviously need to be an administrator to do admin things, and there's a groups tab. So we're gonna do it based on these groups. 
So I'm going to quickly create these three groups. I've got USA, I'm going to create FRA, and I'm going to create GBR. Okay, so that's one created, GBR. And we'll do FRA. Okay. So that's three security groups. So I've got some groups, and currently, no one's a member of any of them. So let's just add me in. I'm going to add myself to the GBR. That would make sense. I'm going to add me. That's my user. Click confirm. So I am now, so the person currently logged in is now a member of that group. So I can see across my different groups. So FRA has no people. GBR has one person. USA has zero people. So I want to now do something to my select to say, only give me access if I'm the right person. So I can say, well, where? And I've got this is member function. And I can do that kind of thing. So is member GBR. In fact, let's just do this uh, a little bit simpler. Before I put it in the where statement, let's just include it so you can see what it looks like. And that's just going to say true for everything because I am a member of GBR. And then change it around and say if member FRA, then we should see that false because I'm not. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's working quite happily. And it makes me sad. In all of their examples, they were doing it this kind of very hard coded way. It's kind of very much saying, you know, it has to have a specific example. So I was like, well, okay, so, you know, does that mean I have to do just kind of a big case statement? So I thought, you know, I'll just try it. Let's take my country is the thing I want to put in there. Put country. And that's instead of me hard coding, are they a member of country? It's saying, just put it it's true or false. So actually, yes, this is passing the, the each row's country value into that is member function, returning a true or false. We just strip out that where statement. We can then see what that's actually doing. So we should get a true or false for each line. So I'm not a member of FRA. I am a member of GBR. I am GBR. I'm not USA. Really good. It's really straightforward. Row level security actually just works, which is awesome. Okay, so let's put that back in. So again, just GBR. And again, the test, let's make sure it actually works. Let's go and add myself into FRA. Win, add me, go, confirm. Now I am administrator here. So this is good that it's working even though I've got admin access. I can't override that. I would need to add myself to the groups or add admin to each of those groups. Let's try that again. Now I am a member of FRA. There we go. Happy, super, super easy. Doesn't have to be hard coded what that is member statement is looking for. You can pass some results of some kind of calculation into that particular field. So I was like, great. That's a really nice, sweet little way of doing role of security. Works in a very similar way to things like SSAS and Power BI and all that kind of stuff. You need to have something in your data that relates to an AD, a person, an Active Directory thing, uh, something, some collection of people has to be living somewhere in your data. Now, this is Spark we're dealing with, right? And I was scared looking at this going, yeah, but is that going to read everything back and then filter it? And in which case, I'm just going to get rid of any kind of performance. So I thought, let's do another test. I've got... Um, got this Delta Lake NYC taxi. So let's do, uh, if we do a select count star from a Delta Lake NYC taxi. So I've got a bit of data in there. I've not got huge amounts of data in here, but it is partitioned. Okay, so we've got, yeah, 84 million rows. Um, but we have, if you just do a quick describe on that actually. Um, believe it is partitioned. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so we've got partition columns in there. So I can include that pickup date month. Um, so if I put that back to how it was, uh, and we can just include pickup date month in our account, and let's just whoops, try and write a SQL by randomly hammering keys. Okay, so where? No, whoops, screw by. Okay, so doing that, so we can see, yeah, I've got a whole load of different rows. Most importantly, I've got loads of partitions. So it's partitioned based on year, month, day. So I've got loads of nitty granular partitions. And if I go and have a look at this, um, we can have a look at the underlying SQL query. 
Um, we should see. I'm, I'm just in a count. I'm likely to get again, I think. Uh, what was a good thing from here? Let's do some of, I think it's total amount. That sounds like a taxi thing. Um, so we'll see how many partitions it's going to hit. That was just reading from the delta logs that are counted. I didn't need to be able to do anything for that. Um, so we should be able to go and see how many we're going to have. Okay, so now we've got some better data coming back. We can have a look. We can see it's doing a full read of it, and it's reading 936 different files from 491 partitions. Essentially, this is horrendously inefficient for the sake of showing I got lots of partitions. Okay, now my worry with row level security, as I was saying, is if I add in something here to partition this table, or to filter this table dynamically based on a, a state, a member, a someone running it, then it's not going to hit that partition. Um, so what I want to do is, so if I've got a uh, pick up date month, and I want to filter this to a particular one. So what's a good one? It's logic 2019. Yeah, 2019.05. Let's do that. So 2019.05. So if I run this, I should get one record back. And when I look at what happened in there, I want to see partition elimination. I don't want to see hundreds. I want to see a couple. There we go. So it's only read a subset of the files pertaining to the one partition. I was like, go with that partition. Just that one. Go read it. Um, so obviously it had 31 days inside that month. That makes sense. Um, so that's working properly. And I want to replicate that. So I want to say if I use an is member function against this, so treat it like full row level security, I want it to actually use partition elimination. So I'm going to take 2019 five. This is a weird example to use, but hopefully it's making sense. And I say, I'm going to create a group called that. So give that as my group name. Again, normally this would be your business segment. It would be your area, your territory, your sales function, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to add myself into that group. So if I now do an is member against 2019.05, I'll get true. And against anything else, I'll get false. Um, so we can now try that. So if I just get that back again, and I just do an is member and I put in the that same pick up date month. Uh, might need to group by it. I'll pop it in a group by it just in case. Okay. So we should see didn't like that. Uh, what's going on there? Oh, I've got a where statement that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So expecting a similar kind of thing except just a true 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 false 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 that kind of stuff. Actually I'm assuming false for everything except 2019.05 based on my access. And it's going in and it's reading all my data again. There we go, lots and lots of falses. And I've got one true. Okay, so that's working. That's working in as our same example. So we can do, we can just, instead of having that in our group by, we can slap that straight into our where statement. And I'm pretty confident that this is going to do the same as the other one. It's just gonna bring me back the data that I care about. That's pretty quick. That is a good sign. Um, so if we go into the SQL query, what we want here is despite the fact I've not explicitly filtered on a partition, um, but my is member statement has managed to reduce the number of files I've read. So that for me is a massive, massive thing. So dynamic row level security, awesome, fantastic feature, but only if it performs. If it kind of intercepts and gets in the way of any kind of performance tuning, it's pointless. Um, in this case, it's doing full proper partition elimination. It's determining dynamically whether I'm a member of a group, using that to determine which filters I place, realizing that is filtering on a partition column and dynamically changing the plan. Let's see what it actually does in terms of the explain plan. Sure, we'll have anything, we won't have anything dynamic in here, I don't think. Go and see what's going on. But do we have something in there? Date filters, no. Partition filters. Okay, so interesting. So for the partition filter, it's actually taken a subset of the groups that I'm in. So rather than doing a, just filter it to this one because this is to do with the thing I'm doing, it's actually just said, here's a big list of all the groups this user is a member of, just pass that in and do basically a in statement. And that, that works. I don't know if there's any bad things about that being in the explain plan. I can't think of anything, any dodgy security things there, but you know, odd. Um, but from a performance point of view, I am happy. So we can now create a view layer. So if I just do create view, let's call this um, 
Let's do filtered taxis. And we'll put that in that same Delta Lake database. Okay. And then I should be able to do, so if I do select star from, and then we'll grab that in. And I'm gonna go and add myself, give myself the pleasure of a new um, partition year country. Um, we'll just make sure that finally works. But otherwise, I'm super happy with how that works. That just makes sense to me. So I've now got permission to look at uh, the next month. Do, 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 do. Give myself access, otherwise that won't work. Select, confirm. Back in here, rerun. Goes off, talks to that view, and there we go. So I've got now the extra month. So no delay, no filtering through, no federated replicated type stuff, just immediate replicating working. So for me, that was a pleasant surprise. I had missed that in terms of the uh, runtime 7.3 release. That is huge. So if you are, if you create a database just for that view layer, and then you use table access control and say, you Mr. User only have access to this view layer, you Mr. User only have access to that other layer, you can control who actually has to go through your security layer and who doesn't. And then if you're hooking up to things like Power BI, like Tableau, like look at like any other kind of BI tool, and it's accessing via a user, again, if it's Power BI, it's now got AAD, so they'll automatically um, go in and authenticate as the right user, and then they'll be presented with the right data for them. So we can hook that up through Power BI, and anytime Power BI is doing a direct query and pushing data back to Databricks, it's going to fill to the row in an efficient, performant manner. So that, for me, is a huge, huge step on that journey towards having the lake house approach, having the full, you know what? You can build a highly functional, highly secure, fully featured warehouse inside of a lake. So big news. That's really, really cool. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Give us some feedback. Are you going to use this? Is this going to be part of your security approach? Or honestly, would you just always use Power BI to do the role of security and you wouldn't apply this kind of thing when doing direct query? Useful to know. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time.